Hey, good morning. I'm Superintendent Anthony Furivanti, the officer in charge of Traffic Support Branch. I'll give a quick statement uh, and then I'll open it up to questions. We know that at this time of year with the great weather and the two down under approaching us, we're going to have all the avid cyclists out on our roads. And we also know it's a time where other cyclists will be dusting off their bikes, pumping up their tyres and putting on their lycra. The increased number of cyclists on our roads gives police and the community an opportunity to educate cyclists and motor vehicle drivers about cycle and vehicle safety and how to share the road safely. Commencing tomorrow the 6th of January and going through until the 21st of January we'll be running Operation Safe Cycling which is not only an enforcement campaign but an education campaign to educate all road users on how to share the roads safely. In 2017 Two cyclists lost our. In 2017, two cyclists lost their lives on South Australian roads. 40 cyclists were admitted to hospital with serious injuries, and a appalling 602 cyclists received either medical treatment in a hospital or by a private doctor for minor injuries. So there are a total of 642 unnecessary injuries on our roads. We know that in 2017, 47% of all cyclist crashes happened on 60 km an hour roads, and 44% of all cyclist crashes happened on 50 km an hour roads. Most of the crashes happened at those times where there were high volumes of traffic on the roads, and that was in the morning peak between 8 and 10, and the afternoon peak of between 4 and 6. We were asking cyclists to ride safely, obey all the road rules, wear their safety equipment, especially their helmets, and when riding to scan ahead. There's no doubt that if a cyclist is involved in a crash with a motor vehicle, whether they're abiding by the laws or not, they will always come off second best. So we're asking motorists at this time of year to be patient and exercise care towards cyclists and safely share the roads. What are you actually doing in this operation? What can motorists and cyclists expect to see during you know, these two or three weeks? Well, what we'll be doing is we'll be in areas where we know there's going to be lots of cyclists. Uh, and that's probably along the Esplanade where we know that in the mornings and the afternoons cyclists, cyclists are out here training. Uh, and we'll also be around all the tour down under events. So we're going to be talking to people about cyclist safety uh, and we'll also be ensuring that cyclists and motorists abide by all the lot rules that, that relate to cyclists. So there'll be a more visible presence from police? Yeah, that's what we're after. We're asking all police officers out there to focus over the next two weeks on cyclist safe behaviour. Has there been an increase in these, you know, these sharing bike apps that are sort of popping up on every corner? Has there been an increase in people sort of having incidents with them, perhaps people who aren't as bike savvy hopping on one and having a prank? I'm unable to comment on that. Yeah, I'm not aware of though that app. Uh. In terms of um, cyclists, the rules have changed, what, a year or so ago, riding on footpaths, cars having to give them um, distance between the, the vehicle and the cyclists on the road. How's that all been working in, in your view? Is that also the sort of thing you'll be looking at? Yeah, we'll definitely be looking at the, uh, the one metre rule. Uh, we will be looking at cyclist behaviour on footpaths. And, and it's, it's really pleasing to know that what these laws have done is they've made riders more aware of their legal obligations and also drivers more aware of, right, of cyclists and more aware of the fact that we need to share our roads and the roads are there for everyone, including the footpaths. In there any, yeah, are there any figures on people who have been pinged for not obeying the one metre rule? Oh, I mean, there are figures on it uh, and I don't have them at the moment. Um, however, uh, quite often uh, the, the car driver is, is spoken to uh, and because it's difficult at times uh, to actually measure what is that metre. And the main thing that we're after is that motorists are making that effort. You know, they might only be 90 centimetres away, but they, as long as they're making that effort, uh, you know, that's the main thing. Helmets also would be one of the things you'll be looking at, no doubt. Yes, uh, definitely. Uh, safety equipment, helmets, uh, lighting and bicycles. It was really disappointing to see last year. There were probably about 400 people uh, that we spoke to that weren't wearing helmets. I mean, helmets are there for their own safety, uh, and if they do come off, they will protect them. 
uh, and hopefully prevent a serious injury. How lenient are you with kids? Like we've seen a lot of little kids here obviously under supervision, but you know, perhaps teenagers, etc. under 18s anyway, out on the bike, school holidays, good weather. What, what do you say to some of them that you might see, uh, I guess perhaps even hooning around on a bike as it were? Oh, I mean, we'll talk to them about the fact that uh, the road rules are there for all road users. Uh, they don't only apply to motorbikes and cars, but they also apply to, to cyclists. And that, you know, I suppose we could tell them right now, last year we had 652 people that were injured, or six, sorry, we had 642 people that were injured on our roads that were all on bikes. Some of them, it was their poor choices, their mistake. Others, they were just uh, minding their own business and, uh, and riding their bicycles. In more general terms, 5th, uh, what is it today? 5th of January, five days into the new year, it seems to have gotten off to a reasonably good start on the roads. It has, uh, and there's no reason why this shouldn't continue. You know, last year we lost way too many lives on our roads. Uh, each life is one too many, uh, and this year, uh, the less lives lost in our roads, the better. So you have more than 700 crashes involving cyclists last year. Was that a first spike on 2016? I think it was just under 500. Is that pretty concerning, seeing that kind of spike from year to year? I mean, it is concerning, but it also could be an indication that there are more people out there cycling. You know, we've got more cars in our roads, we've got more motorbikes in our roads, uh, so we can only assume that there's more cyclists out there, and especially this time of year. Yeah, obviously that tour down under period is particularly dangerous for cyclists just because there are more of them out on the road? Well, sometimes it's more dangerous, but other times it's not as dangerous because right now, hopefully people are going to listen to the message that we're giving them and they're going to share the roads better, they're going to comply with the laws, uh, so hopefully it's going to be safer. And you've got, little but, wrist, you've, got little, sorry, you've got little wristbands you're handing out as well, just run us through those. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we've got... Uh, wristbands with a, a cyclist road safety message. They're also a, a wristband that's uh, fluorescent and highly visible that riders should wear either on their ankle, their wrist, or put it on their bike uh, when they're riding at night because it's reflective. Uh, so it's just another thing that they can carry just to make their ride a little bit more safer. And so we'll be handing those out uh, at the Tour Down Under uh, and, and today if cyclists ride by. Okay. And this operation itself, I think last year it ran for about a week. You've You've extended the dates the, for Operation Safe Cycling this year. Why is that? Uh, to be honest, it's actually uh, the same as last year. Last year uh, it was two weeks. Uh, we always start off uh, the weekend before the Tour Down Under uh, and we finish it at the completion of the Tour Down Under. So hopefully uh, people are used to sharing the roads, abiding by the laws, looking out for each other uh, before the Tour Down Under when we know there's going to be a lot more cyclists on our roads. What would you tell motorists out there who go, ah, bloody cyclists, what would you tell them? The roads are there for everyone. Uh, and the same for pedestrians, you know, the footpaths are there for everyone. So whether you're a, you're a motorist, you're a cyclist or a pedestrian, uh, we want everyone to share the roads safely.